Do you want to be OP in Wolong Fallen Dynasty? I'm going to show you some of these tips and tricks to make you OP from the start, from the very beginning, and some of these key strategies to defeating these bosses, getting great gear, getting great skills, and becoming really strong and powerful at the beginning of the game. There's a ton of ways in Wolong Fallen Dynasty to get great skills, levels, and great gear that can make you a lot stronger than everybody else. Here are some of these tips and we're going to start from the beginning. So once you go ahead and create your character and customize them, you're going to drop into the world. Once you drop into the world, there's a couple tutorials that will show you how to play the game, such as how to a normal attack, what exactly the spirit attack is. The spirit attack is a stronger attack using your spirit bar and the normal attack is encouraged to be used frequently throughout this game where you can just hack and slash and spam your normal attack um, and dodge out of the way. So some of the big mechanics in the game are dodging and deflecting. So dodging is just double tapping your dodge animation in order to dodge out of an enemy's attack. The deflect option is timing that dodge right when an enemy is going to strike you. That way you can deflect his attack, kind of stun the enemy for a little bit and then get attacks off back on him. At one point you're coming up to an area like this where you can cross this fire that does literally almost no damage. You'll see a tiger here. You can run around the tiger. Try not to engage with the tiger if you don't have to unless you're a psycho and just want to. Jump up on this balcony and on this house. Then once you look over across the other houses and stuff there will be these little lootable markers on the ground. You can grab those and make sure you grab all of them so you can get chi items that you can use later in the game. You can also drop into this house and there will be a chest right there. This is going to be the first thing you want to grab because this chest has really good armor in it. So it has a tier three starred armor, uh, which is way better than your starting armor. And you definitely need to put that on. It's going to give you a lot more defense right off the bat. And if you want to take out this tiger, you can actually jump on top of him and use your stealth attack, which is usually like wire triangle. And it will take off about half of his health. That way you can actually take him out and get the good gear from him if you would like. Next, once you come up to these lootable items, like I said, loot them all. Some will give you gear, some will give them chi items. Then you want to raise these battle flags wherever you can. So you can see my fortitude rank increased to four, which is a good bonus. And then also, as you come up along these marking flags, you're going to want to mark them. Uh, your fortitude rank again will increase. These will actually restore your HP and dispel all status effects from you that are negative. Additionally, there's going to be these markers, which are battle flags. Once you raise these battle flags, it's going to allow you to rest at the area. Once you rest at the area, it replenishes your potion count, meaning if you only had one potion left and you rest here, you'll go back to your max of three or whatever your max is. Once you also get the ability to rest at one of these battle flag markers, you're going to want to upgrade your skills if you have a level to spare. One of the good skills for this first boss fight that you can take advantage of is enhanced defense under the earth phase spells category. Once you cast it for a certain amount of time, you actually receive less damage and won't flinch from powerful attacks. Next, you'll want to jump into your inventory and go ahead and use a couple of chi items such as the genuine chi flake. It's going to give you chi to use so that way you can benefit from that in your battle with this upcoming boss. Now the first boss is actually decently hard for a lot of bosses that I've played in a lot of different games. And it was kind of fun and challenging to have a hard first boss to face. Once you jump into the first boss fight, what you're going to want to do is just rush him and just spam your normal attack. Like I said, this is encouraged in the game and you can usually get off a decent amount of damage in normal attacks uh, before he starts being able to attack back. So once he does his normal attacks, you're kind of going to want to back off a little bit, just play a little bit of a at a distance. Once he starts getting close to you, you can deflect those attacks. One of the big things here is if you are having trouble timing the deflection of attacks, actually just hit the block button at the same time. And once you hit the block button at the same time and try and dodge attacks, generally if you do miss the deflection, it will actually block the attack half the time. Um, so if you hit them both at the same time, it can kind of save you from damage that way. Now, one of the important things you're going to want to pay attention to is the boss's power attacks where he'll glow red. If you deflect his power attacks successfully, it will actually add a bunch of chi to that chi meter up top. Once that fills all the way up, you'll be able to do a special attack on him and it will actually do a lot more damage than the regular attack. And this is what you're going to use to defeat the bosses a lot more. You can see that orange bar up there starting to fill up after I deflect a couple attacks, hit him a couple of times. I finally fill up that chi meter. And once I do, you have the ability to do a damaging special attack on him for about two to three seconds. 
Now you can notice this orange bar at the bottom of my screen. So the more that bar is filled up, the more chi you will transfer and do to the enemy once you actually attack them. This bar naturally depletes. So once you see that blue bar going up, you can use a special attack or a chi attack and actually gain a lot of that back. Once the boss morphs into his next form, there's certain attacks you're going to look out for, such as his charge attack. He also has this swinging attack with his weapon that you're just going to want to dodge from a distance. And then he's also going to have these charge attacks, again, which you're going to want to deflect, where you're also going to try and want to use special attacks on him to make that chi meter up top kind of boost up. So once again, same as the original boss, once you get that meter up, you have about three seconds to actually hit him with a special attack and do a lot more damage. The good thing about this boss is once you learn the two or three attacks being the charge attack, his swing attack, and his stone attack, meaning he'll hit the ground and actually shoot out stones at you from the ground. Once you get used to that and knowing how to dodge and deflect it, and he gets to half health, you can actually, you'll actually get a prompt to use your divine beast, which once you use it, will take out that enemy and that boss will be done. Once you get to the next stage here, you're going to actually have gotten some armor and some gear from that previous boss fight and level. Make sure you go ahead and jump into your inventory and equip that because that gear is generally a lot more powerful and better than your original gear. You also unlock certain things like supplies, co-ops, and the ability to recruit. Make sure when you go in here, you'll probably have the ability to level up some skills. So here are some skills that I leveled up immediately. Cloud Stance, which is a solid first spirit ability. In Fire Phase, I unlock the Fire Bolt, meaning you can throw Fire Bolts at normal and other boss enemies. This Wood Phase spell for a Lightning Bolt, which means you can call down a Lightning Bolt damage on top of targets. Also good for regular enemies. And then after that, I went ahead and started exploring. So once you start exploring the second phase, you're going to want to go in each little building and area that you can because certain buildings like this one are going to have chests that you're going to be able to open and actually get some decent gear and items out of, like that iron sword, which I actually used for this boss fight. So, so this boss fight is a little bit easier, in my opinion, than the first one. This boss only has one stage. There's only a couple attacks you need to look out for some regular attacks and some jumping attacks for the most part if you stay at a distance for this fight he kind of attacks your companion um, and then once he attacks your companion a couple times you can sneak in regular hits or once he starts getting ready to do his power attack you can just wait kind of for that to happen and then try and deflect it like i did here so you can see i deflect that uh, transfer a lot of this chi energy to him and then i'm able to do my special attack and do a lot of damage all at once to this boss the big thing here, like I said, stay at a distance, wait for him to do his special attack, and then you can deflect it uh, and do a lot of damage here and beat this boss, I think, pretty easily. So this boss, again, gives pretty good items. You can see that general helmet and that sword I got right there. The helmet is really good, so I equip that gear and then again start exploring. So the second phase here, there's actually another area that you'll run into before that boss where there's an enemy that is pretty high level that you kind of don't want to face just yet. Once you defeat that boss, you'll get the ability to come into this cave where you can defeat these enemies and you're actually above the original enemy that your companion kind of told you to, to stay away from. And that's important because once you get up here, you can actually jump down on top of this enemy, uh, secret attack him with your wire triangle button and do a decent amount of damage from the start. So you can see I jump down on him, do the sneak attack. It does a decent amount of damage. And then for this guy, you're going to want to dodge, obviously, and deflect. But you're going to kind of want to stay away from this fight just a little bit because you can see this guy swings really quick. Uh, and he can basically kill you in one swing almost. So I would recommend casting some of your abilities like Firebolt, Lightning Bolt, things like that. And you can actually wait for his attacks to go off. So you can wait for him to swing three times, jump up and attack him. Uh, dodge back same thing let him go through his swings of attacks uh, and then once he gets done attack him that way you can see i got a bunch of gear from him as well as a chest here which is going to give me another great weapon and then another great battle flag which is going to give me a fortitude rank increase and one of the big things here again is to explore all the areas and get as many of these chests as possible because you can get great gear and if you don't get great gear you can sell it to buy other gear there's actually this one area in a temple that you'll find with stuff on the ground to pick up and loot i actually found a dragon vein crystal and this is really important because it increases the efficacy of the dragon's cure pot uh, and the uses by one so once you use this dragon vein crystal you're actually going to be able to get one more dragon's pot to use, meaning your maximum will be able to go from three uh, that you can carry up to four. So that means each time you use them, you see I have one left and I rest. Each time you rest, you'll recover all those pots. 
meaning now I have a max of four uh, instead of three, which in big boss battles is definitely going to be useful. And for this final boss fight in the demo, what you're going to do is go ahead and upgrade your skills one more time. Just buy any skill that you think you might use for me and nearby allies to gain extra damage. You're also going to want to go in here and sell any of your items you don't need. Um, and then you can actually buy items that you might need like arrows if you want to buy arrows um, or chi items, things like that. So next you're going to come up against this final boss. It's like a gigantic mutant hog type boss. There's only a couple attacks you really need to pay attention to here. So some of his main attacks are a charge attack. The best way to avoid this is to dodge out of the way, but you can deflect this attack and time it pretty easily uh, just because he goes the same speed. Also, you can see my divine spell there is recharged. So I actually use that. Uh, it did a ton of damage. And then once it does a ton of damage, it boosts the chi meter up of this boss. So that way you can almost do your big special attack against him. Um, once that meter is, is pretty much full from the divine attack. So it's kind of a double hit there, to be honest. This boss has another special attack, which is standing up and walking at you and basically falling on you. Again, that attack is kind of easy to time. And once you learn how to time it, you can hit him with a special attack, do a ton of damage here. Um, and this boss, again, is, is honestly easier than the first original boss. And especially because he only has the one phase, right? So this boss will do a ton of attacking your teammate again, uh, kind of like the second boss fight. And all you have to do eventually is learn how to dodge and deflect these charge attacks for the most part. And you will be all right. You'll be able to do enough damage off of these and off of like deflections like this. Uh, that you can do your special attacks at the right time and basically destroy this boss no time. Again, this boss will give you really good gear, good experience. You have a decent amount of coins to start out and have some pretty solid gear um, already as well as leveling up in terms of being able to buy certain skills already and kind of start building those attributes. That being said, I went over a lot of the main points of how to get gear really quickly and go ahead and, and start to become pretty powerful. Uh, even as just at the beginning of this game in the demo. That being said, if you guys enjoyed, make sure to drop a like. Check out one of these videos on the right, and I'll talk to you later. Thanks.